hello everyone welcome to another video tutorial on the code angle youtube channel in today's video i'll be creating a score application as regards the fifa world cup currently going on in qatar 2022 actually i've been searching online for an api that can handle this particular uh, function but most of them i discovered are paid so i was able to get one on a platform called rapid api if you are not familiar with rapid api rapid api is a platform where millions of developers used to build and share thousands of api so that is you can go on this platform and then you can try to monetize your apis and then sell them for other developers to consume and integrate into their application it is as far as i know the largest api hub online where millions of developers try to connect and build and sell tons of apis they are not sponsoring this video actually but i actually got an api from rapid api that handles what i wanted to create so without wasting much time let me quickly show you a demo of today's project as you can see on the screen we have a text that says no matches today and we have a date speaker also displaying on the page so when i click on this date speaker you can see we have some sections of the date speaker which are disabled this is because the work of started as at november 21st and is due to end by december 18th so i disabled the rest of the dates and only enabled the days where the work cup is taking place to get the scores of matches played for the specific days once i click on a particular date for instance if i click on the 29th of november it gets the scores for that particular day as you can see so many so many countries played on that day um ghana winning korea republic 32 cameroon drawing 33 so i'll try to get the score for today which is the 11th of december 2022 as you can see morocco was able to defeat the portuguese by one goal to nil and one thing i noticed is the api kind of shows some of the results of the previous day which is not um 100% accurate but um, it's the best API I can see online which is free to undo this so that's why I had to make use of this and actually it has um, a paid plan so I'm currently using the free plan which only allows 50 requests per month so anyways the purpose of this video is to understand how to integrate this particular API and then see how we are able to make it work so if you are new to this channel whether your country is still at the World Cup or not, make sure you like as well as subscribe. Without wasting much time, let's get started with this project. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new real project. So as you can see in my terminal, I already created a directory. And inside of this directory, I'll be making use of a command in create React app to generate a new React project. And that command goes by npm init react-app and then the name of our app, which I'll call World Cup app, and then press enter. And with that, a new React application will be generated for us. Now that the project has completed installing, what we can do is to move into the directory of the project. So we can just make use of the CD command and then type in WC app, and then open the project up in Visual Studio Code which i just did so with this we can now begin the implementation of the design of the project but to do that we still need to clear up some boiler plates templates which are created for us by default in create that app so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to clear everything inside of the app.js within this div i'm going to clear this header tag and then once i do that i'm going to create a new file and this file is going to be called score.js so inside of this file i'm just going to make use of the short code to generate a boilerplate template and inside of the score i can just have hello world right here and then we can import this score file inside of our app.js so what i'm going to do is import it and then once that is done i think we can save and then see how the page looks on the browser and for us to see that we need to run the command npm start and then the project compiles and we're able to see it inside of the 
browser. So as you can see, we have the hello world text showing on the page, which means our file, that is the score.js file, is now displaying on the browser. So now we can start the design. I don't want to waste too much time on the design. So I already have the code for the design ready, which I'll be making available as a starter template code on GitHub, which I'll provide a link in the description. So I'll open up my notepad and then grab everything within the div tag and then what i'm going to do is to paste it right here so once i do that i'm going to save and then let's see if there are any changes on the page as you can see we have two static tests but the arrangement is not like what we saw when we were taking a look at the demo at the beginning of this um, tutorial so what i'm going to do is to grab the css so i'm going to scroll down a bit and then so i'm going to grab all the css copy it as well and then add to the app.css file clear everything within this file and then i'm going to paste the css right in the app.css file and save that as well as you can see the page now looks the way we have it in the demo but what we have here is just static data of uh two separate clubs that is newcastle united and manchester united so what we can do next is to head back to the code so what we can do next is to install axios as well as the date picker library we'll be using for this project axios allows us to consume the rest api from the rapid api platform while the date picker library which is called react date picker allows us to select these different dates in which the matches were played so quickly I'm going to stop this server and then I'm going to run npm install Axios as well as the React date speaker. So I'm just going to grab this part and then paste it in our terminal so both packages get installed simultaneously. So while these packages are getting installed, we can set up our Rapid API platform. So what we need to do is to head straight to rapidapi.com. So what I'm going to do is to sign up. So I'm going to click on the sign up on the top right navbar and then it directs us to the sign up page inside of this page what i'm going to do next is to sign up with one of my google accounts so i'm going to click sign up with google and it's going to show me all my google accounts i have available so i'm going to select one of the google accounts i'll be using for this particular project i expect you to do the same as well so once that is done it asks you for further details like your full name i'm just going to put my full name here and then my organization, the code angle, which is the name of my YouTube channel. I'm just going to, I won't click on the checkbox we have here. I think I'm just done with this info I provided. So once I click on the done button and then the page refreshes, it takes me to the landing page or, or the dashboard rather, where I can select the type of APIs I want to use. I have access to public APIs as well as um, private APIs. But the API I want to use is called, as you can see, FIFA 2022 Schedule Start API. So I'm just going to search for that particular API. So once I click on the enter button, it shows me the details of that API. And I'm just going to select that so you can follow the instructions and do that as well. So once that is done, the next step is to probably go through the documentation. As you can see, we have the About tab, which shows us about the creators of the API the tutorials section um, there's nothing there the discussion section nothing there on the pricing section however um, we can see we have about four options the first option is the basic option which is free but we are limited to 50 ad requests per month that is 30 requests per minute as well and in the pro plan is 499 per month but you have the freedom of making 50,000 ad limit requests and then for ultra is which is 499 then we have 9999 which is the mega plan but we don't need to do any of this paid plan so what we want to do is really simple so i'm just going to be making use of the basic plan but once again i want us to take a look at this endpoint tab this tab provide details a brief detail about what we are going to be doing in our react um, application one thing i really like about the rapid api platform is the documentation which is superb so you can see you have access to different languages but for us we're making use of javascript and inside of the javascript we're making use of axios to consume the endpoint so i'm going to select axios and you can see we have the x rapid api key which will be very crucial without this api key 
we will not be able to make our request so that will be put in our .env file for security purpose and for best practice purpose so once we begin in the implementation you see what i mean by that to make this api work one final thing we need to do is to subscribe to the to this particular api because if you don't subscribe it won't work as well so i'm just gonna click, click on the subscribe to test button and then it takes me to the plans and then i need to select the plan i want to use so i click on the free plan which is a basic plan and then i click on subscribe and as you can see it says subscription created successfully so that means our subscription would now work anytime we try to query that particular api now that we've completed the setup of our rapid api what we can do next is try to consume it inside of our react application and see if we can get the data to show inside of our console so to consume the endpoint from the rapid api platform we would need to create a new file i'll be calling this file api.js within the src directory so i'm gonna do that right now so now that we have the api.js what this file does basically is we're going to be making use of something called axios.create which is a handy feature within axios that allows us to create a new instance of axios and also make use of custom configurations you see what i mean by that right now so to set up this configuration the first thing we need to do is to import axios so i'm just going to type import axios from axios next up i'm going to make use of the export keyword which is going to be export default axios.create and within this axios.create i'm going to set up our base url so i'm going to say base url and we need to grab this from the rapid api so i'm going to head back to the rapid api documentation and this url we see here within this options objects so i'm just going to grab everything inside of here up until the dot com where the dot com stops that is forward slash so i'm just going to grab that and then head back to the api.js file and paste it right in so this will serve as our base url and then we can now move on from there by heading back to our course.js application by doing this i'm just going to close some of the tabs we have here i'm going to save this close the tab close it up for the app.css as well so within this course.js file right above i'm going to import two hooks in react the first hook is called the use state hook and then the use effect hook so the first one we'll be making use of is called the use effect hook so quickly down below i'm just going to type in use effect and it's going to come in from a function and we can just add in an empty dependency array by making use of the square brackets we, we see right there and then what we can do next is now to try to make a get request to this endpoint so how do we do this we need to import the api.js file and we can easily do that by typing in import api from dot forward slash api so with that we now have access to the api.js instance configuration in axios so i can just within the use effect say api dot you can see it provides us with different methods like the bind the call the delete but what we want to make use of is the get so i'm just going to select the get so with that i can now open a bracket and within this bracket i'm going to make use of back tick and if you take a look at the api it has four slash schedule that's the endpoint we'll be making use of that's the schedule endpoint so i'm just going to copy that and then head back to our file and put that in right there and it takes in another argument within this bracket so i'm just going to open some sort of curly brace brackets within this so we're going to make use of the params within the params we have an object right in front of it and this endpoint when you take a look at the documentation takes in two parameters that is the date object as well as the utf offset which is set to eight i think this is optional and it's not compulsory the major thing we need is the date so i'm just going to grab these two particular 
text and then paste them in the params for now once we do that the next thing is to set up the headers down below i'm just gonna head straight to the documentation once more and then grab everything right inside of here so i'm just gonna copy everything within the headers object and then paste it what we can do is we can create an env file to help our api key to remain secure that is anytime we want to push to github it doesn't get exposed to any form of security risks i'm gonna create a new file called dot env you can see this is outside of the src directory it's directly in the base of our application if you create this inside your src directory it's not going to work and by default react allows us to have access to any form of configuration we do inside our .env directory as long as we start with the react underscore app keyword we'll be able to have access to this throughout our application now after the react underscore app um, word keyword we can now add any other form of text to this so i'm just going to call this rapid underscore api underscore key so I'm going to set this equals to the API key provided for us by Rapid API. So I'm just going to cut this out. So let me grab everything right inside of this code. And then I'm going to paste it within this EMV file. The proper thing to do now is to access this through the process.env keyword. So I'm going to make use of backticks and then the dollar sign as well as the brackets. So I'm just going to say process.env react underscore app in fact instead of typing it out let me just grab everything we have here react app rapid api key so i'm just going to paste it so now we now have access to our api key inside of the .env file so this api key can now work and is now secure anytime we push to probably a version control like um, github what we've just done returns a promise so that means we'll make use of the dot then keyword to be able to change to this so i'm just going to make use of dot then okay so dot then returns a response so this response we can make use of the fat arrow to display whatever data we are getting so i'm just going to type in console.log and then log the response in the browser and then undo the error by making use of the catch keyword the same thing we did with the response we're going to make use of the cash, uh, the fat arrow to display any error we may have inside of the console. So I'm just going to say console.log return the error. I think that's all we need to do. So I'm going to save and then I'm going to load the application in the browser to see if we're able to get the data in our console. So quickly, I'm going to run npm start to start the server again. And while the server is starting, I can quickly show us in the package.json file, we can see the Axios has been installed as well as React Date Picker version 4.8.0. Let's wait for the app to compile. As you can see, the app has finished compiling. I can now open up the console and then inspect what we have inside of the console by selecting the console tab. And you can see we have an object right here. So I'm just going to open this object and you can see we have a data and the data sort of returns four items that is objects in the array and when you take a look at this api we have a date um by default right here which is kind of um static we just put in a random date ideally what we want to do is to make use of the date speaker to help us select the dates but because we're trying to get the data at first to see if the api works that's why we put in this particular date and then you can see we're able to access the data and it turns for objects we just need a few things from this object what we need is the score as well as the countries that are playing so we can get them from um, the away object and the home objects what do i mean by, by this as you can see from this first object we extracted when i open up the away parts you can see we have the netherlands showing that's the name of the country so it's represented by short club name and then the score of the particular match they played is going to show there as well they scored two in this particular match if i go to the home part of the object the team they play again is going to show which is senegal so you can see senegal and the score they have is zero which actually means senegal lost that match at that particular date to zero so 
same thing applies for the remaining three objects if i extract them it's going to show me the scores so what i'm going to do now is try to look through this particular data and then display it in the ui instead of having the static data which shows newcastle beating manchester united three goes to one so to do that i'm going to make use of the use state. this is where it comes in so the use state is going to help us to hold our data to do that above the use effect I'm just going to create two variables, a set, setter and a getter. The first one is data rather, and the second one is called set data. And then I'm going to say it's equals to use state. And then the use state bracket is going to be empty. So I'm just going to grab this use state. And then instead of doing the console.log rest, I'm just going to pass in the use state and then pass in the response, which our data returns. And that means we can now access it by making use of this data. So next step is to head straight to our UI and try to loop through the data. So I'm going to scroll down to the page and within the match div, somewhere around there, I'm going, this is where I'm going to loop through the data. So the match content div holds the parts of the card that displays the scores. So I'm going to open a bracket and then I'm going to say data dot data why am i saying data dot data when you look at the console you can see the first thing that returns from the console where the data resides is inside the data option that we have right here we, that we need to extract the data object rather so for us to get this object we need to say data dot data to access that particular object so that's why we're making use of that particular keyword and everything is within the matches array as you can see so it will be data dot data dot matches to proceed i'm just gonna say dot matches and then we now need to loop through since it's now an array so i'm gonna make use of the array method called map within the map i'm going to open a bracket and then try to extract the two objects we are dealing with right here which is home and away these are the two objects that holds the are they arrays or objects they are objects actually that holds the data so this away and then this is home so we for us to extract this we need to pass them the way they appear here that is it has an upper case of a so i'm just going to type in home by making use of upper case home same thing with the other objects away if i don't do it this way we're going to get an error so once this is done we need to make use of the fat arrow to wrap around uh particular div so i'm just gonna cut this and then paste it at the bottom right here wrapping around the div with that we can now make the data dynamic so what we can do first is passing the key because we don't pass in the key attributes react is going to freak out so i'm just gonna say key is equals to and it starts to be unique so i can just say home i think we have a country id let me check that id of the country so this, this is going to serve as a unique ID. So I'm just going to grab that. So home.country ID. So with that, we don't have any form of errors showing in React. So the next step is to display the names of the country. So instead of having Newcastle United here, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And then within the brackets, I'm just going to say home, which is uppercase dot. I think it's called short country name or short club name rather. So I'm just going to grab that and then pass that in as in. And then the second one is going to be away.short club name. So I'm just going to look for the name of the second text we have right here. So open the brackets. So instead of home, we're going to have away, which has an uppercase of away. And then we need to pass in their scores as well. So to pass in the scores, it's going to be home.score. So I'm going to say home dot score as well as away dot score yeah i think the score for the away team is here which is one so i'm just gonna pass that so away dot score so i'm gonna save let's check the browser to see how the page looks as you can see we can now see the countries appearing dynamically however their scores are not appearing for some reason probably we didn't pass it properly when i check you can see this score is actually uppercase not lowercase so i made it up a lowercase so the score is uppercase so i'm gonna correct that that's why the scores were not showing so i'm gonna save once more and then let's check as you can see the scores now appear which is fantastic now we're able to get the scores but the next thing we need to do is to make sure that anytime we click on the dates, we're able to filter the matches played for those particular days. And we need the React date picker to help us 
to perform this functionality so since we already install this library in our projects what i'm going to do is to add to the code and then write above the objects where we are looping through the data i can just import the date picker so to do that i can just say date picker and then try to import this here but we can just do that from the documentation so let me see you can see we have here import date picker from react date picker so let me just import this and paste it right above instead of trying to use intellisense to bring it in and then i think we need some css configuration like this import keyword so to make the design look nice i need to make use of that import and it has to be on top in the css right above the container and we have to make use of the art because we are making use of importation in CSS. You make use of the art keyword and that will get recognized by CSS. So I, I can close this app.css file back. So if I go back to the page, I should be able to see probably we have a date picker showing on top of the page. If I refresh, as you can see, a date picker is showing. But for some reason, there is no date showing within this particular input text because we've not configured a date picker. We need to pass in a date variable by default. So I'm, I'm going to make use of the use date to do it. So I can just set in a variable called const date and then I can just say set date and I make use of the use state once more. But this time around, we need to pass in a new date. So I'm just going to make use of the new date keyword in JavaScript. And then, so I'm going to copy this date, which is the getter. And it's going to be passed as props. So our props needs to be configured in this get picker for it to work properly. So the first prop we're going to make use of is the selected prop, which takes in the dates we created above. So once that is done the next prop is the unchange prop so i'm just going to pass in unchange and i'm going to create a function called undo change to help us to monitor anytime we change the date of the date picker right above we're going to create a function to undo that so function and then we paste in the undo change variable and then pass in the event so let me just make use of the enter keyword to create some space so within this we can now call our set date function so it now takes in any time we create a new date the set date changes the date because right above is taking in this new date by default but anytime we select the date picker we want the set date variable to change this date variable as well so that's why we are calling it inside of the undo change function so one thing i want us to know before we proceed is in the use effect it loads the data for the current date so what the function for the undo change does is it helps us to select for other days of the month for the use effect what i can do above is to pass in the current date that is if today is sunday or monday it passes in the dates for that particular date to the api so instead of having this static data so i'm just going to say const current date is equals to new date then i'm going to say dot to string to iso string and then i'm going to make use of the split dot split and then i'm going to pass in an uppercase t and then make use of the bracket notation and passing a zero so with that we can now get the current dates for us to know how this looks let me console log it in the browser as well as well as passing it right here inside of here we can make use of the back six and then dollar sign and then passing the current date so let me save and then you see what i mean by this it's going to display results for this particular date anytime the page refreshes and the result for today was england one france two that is england are out and you can see in the console it shows 22nd 12 11 and that's for the current date so it's kind of updates that is if the match is played tomorrow it shows the date for that particular date for tomorrow but because of what we want to do that is we want to change to different days of the week we need to make use of the undo change function to help us to load for previous matches and we want that to update on the ui we need to perform this inside of the undo change function similar to what we have in the use effect what i'm going to do is in fact grab everything inside of the use effect and then paste it inside of the undo change function so the need, what needs to change here is we need to pass in the selected date that is the date we select from the date picker so for us to do that we need to create another variable instead of the current date this is going to be called selected date 
So the selected date is going to have events.iso string. New date allows us to get the current date, but the event allows us to get the selected date. So all we need to do is just to I'm gonna copy the selected date, paste it inside the console.log, paste it inside of the params as well. So that is the API now has the data for the selected date. So I'm gonna save. So now that the page has refreshed, I'm just gonna select probably November 30th. As you can see on the console, it shows November 30th, and you can see the result for November 30th showing on the screen. So now we now have the data for the course appearing dynamically based on the dates we select. So if I select a date in probably December 3rd, it shows the scores for the December 3rd, so which is awesome. So what we just need to do is just to do some final polishing, for instance, we want to disable the dates that the workup do not get played in. The React Date Speaker helps us to handle that properly by passing in certain props. So one of these props is called the main date. So I'm just going to start with that. So main date allows us to do this. And what I can do is do make use of the new date keyword in JavaScript. And then within this, I can just pass in another new date. And now we're going to make use of a function called a method called get full year, which allows us to get the full year and then configure it the way we want. So I can just say the from the 10th, that is 10 represents November, and then the 21st represents the 21st of November. That is, I want any date before the 21st of November to be disabled. That's what the main date prop stands for. While the max date prop, I'm going to pass in that. Is going to help us to disable every any dates after December 18th, which is the day the work up ends. So that will be 11th, and then we'll pass in 18 year. The reason why it's not 12 and December is 11 is because in JavaScript everything usually starts with zero. So mostly in programming, so that is January is going to be zero, and then because of that, our December is 11th, and then November is 10th. I didn't configure the max dates properly. I have upper case which is wrong so now that that's corrected i can save and you see on the date speaker those dates are gonna get um, disabled the dates in which the work up is not taking place is gonna get disabled as you can see anything after december 18 get disabled same thing for anything before november 24th so we're able to disable all that so in some cases we might want to get result of scores that are yet to be determined for instance on the 18th we don't know the teams that are going to get into the final and we're trying to get data for that so we're gonna get a blank screen for that so we can just put in default text to handle that particular functionality so how do i do this for the home dot short club name i can just say anytime it's equals to undefined because it's returning undefined anytime we're trying to get for matches that are yet to exist exists we can just return a text that says undetermined so else return the name of our country same thing can apply to the every countries that they are playing against so i can just say if it's equals to undefined i can return undetermined else i can just return the data once it's determined that is that will be the name of the country the they are playing against so when i save you see how that comes into play so we refresh and then if i try to select the date of the last match of the tournament which is yet to be determined and i click on it you see we have it's yet to be determined so which is actually cool one final thing we can do is there are some days where no walk up matches are played so for instance on the 8th of december there was a break so no matches were played so instead of having a blank screen when you select that particular date we can just undo that particular functionalities by saying if there are no matches on that day probably it should show on the screen that there are no matches on that day so to do that i can just say data dot data dot matches dot length so if the data of the matches for that day if the length is equals to zero then we can return something so what can we return i can just open a div right here and within this div i can just have an h4 tag that says no matches today else we can just return an empty quotes so i can just save and then let's see what happens when we try to check the 8th of December.
So you can see it says no matches today. If I select 8th of December, no matches today because there are no matches on that particular day. So there is a break on that day. So any day within this date picker where no matches are played, it says no matches on that particular day. So now I think every scenario is being handled and this um, application is able to get every scores for each particular day. With that, uh, I think we can now uh, proceed to end this tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure you drop it in the comment section. And if you have any suggestion on tutorials you want me to create, you can also leave it in the comment section. So before you go, make sure you like as well as subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.